Welcome to our October work session. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Paulette <coughs> O'Friot? Here. Suche? Here. Brian Tobin? Here. John Crean? Here. Scott Latham? Here. In the event of an emergency, everyone can exit the one-side road parking lot. And in the event of an emergency, please do not leave in your automobile, since this may cause traffic problems and blocking coming emergency vehicles. Thank you. We just have one piece of business to take action on before we turn this over to Dr. Morrow. Um, we have Alyssa Basso, a revi revised leave of absence, effective September 20th through February 11th, 2022. And that's leaving the district and entering the district. Martin Meningo, 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 uh, who is our math leave replacement, effective September 29th, 2021, through February 11th, 2022. Is there a motion to accept the recommendations? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Do we, do we adjourn then? And then. You can, you can do that, sure. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the meeting is now yours, <coughs> or the non-meeting is now yours. <laughs> <laughs> so our work session today is focused on um, some work that we started with our administrative team over the summer, and then, um, you know, our board will put some work into it now. On Superintendent's Conference Day, we're going to ask for input uh, from our faculty and staff, and then um, we're going to... Um, find ways to put it out to our parents and students because we'd like to get feedback from them too about it. So um, the work is all um, centered around the portrait of a graduate. You know, so um, you're gonna have to excuse my graphic. I just put the settler logo in the middle. We will, when we get more creative people than me, um, figure out a much better graphic for that. Um, as you can see on some of the examples I gave you, some are heads, some are people standing in their cap and gown, and, and others are different things. So the portrait of a graduate, um, it really is a representation of what the vision of a school district um, sees as the traits that you want someone who graduates from Southhold High School to have. Um, you know, the process of building it is, is a, um, it's a community effort. You know, it's administrators, it's teachers, it's it's all employees, it's students, and it's parents. Um, you know, all uh, will contribute to the process of putting together, you know, the, the picture of what someone who walks out of Southhold High School, um, what traits they will exhibit so they can be successful in life, whether it's um, walking right into a job, whether it's going to college, um, you know, whether it's becoming an ent entrepreneur and starting your own uh, job. <clears throat> you know, from, from the portrait of a student, we'll um, work backward to design uh, goals and mission statements. Um, so it's, it's really a UBD backward design process. You know, um, it's what they use in the auto industry. You know, what do you want the car to look like and do? Then what do we have to do to make that car look like that and do it? Um, what do we what do we believe a, a student who walks out of Southhold High School? Uh, what traits should they exhibit? And then um, it allows us to build backwards from there uh, into what we need to do to give people the ability to develop those traits. And the truth is, some people walk in with them, um, some people don't. So. When we worked at our administrative treat over the summer, we, we identified some um, independent and critical thinkers, inclusive and accepting collaborators, self-advocates, you know, which is a big one for us and it's something that we're focusing on, getting um, kids to be able to advocate for themselves, whether it's for their own education um, or in life. Communicators, well-rounded. And then we started to just live, list values that we believe can be um, connected with traits. Um, we want people to be empathetic. We want them to have integrity, character. We want them to be accepting of all. Um, I gave you a number of, could I ask, do you have the uh, clicker? Is it possible to just scroll up and down? Oh, I got it, I'm sorry, I apologize. So um, if you look at some of the different portraits of a graduate that I shared, um, you'll see that 
They grouped them, which we will eventually do later. We will group and expand on the language a little bit, um, you know, once we put them into different places. But, um, you know. You move that red one right up into one of those empty boxes. Excuse me? Civic minded. Yep. Say that to us. Okay. You know, so I, I shared with you these ones. And um, some of them are for full school districts, some are for individual schools. And there was even one I think I put in that was um, uh, from a college. But, um, you know, you can see their graphics are prettier than mine because um, it's not really my cup of tea. But like I said, we have a lot of people that are very, very creative and they'll come up a with A lot of students that can help you with yeah, that. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of um, people in our community, our school community, that will come up with a great graphic. Like maybe we'll do a contest with students and they can all, um, you know, put in what they think and we can vote or figure out a way. So, um, you know, these are examples of them. You know, all, all kind of different ones. Um, we're looking at something that will be more similar to these types. So we would put our descriptors, you know, a number of descriptors are very close in, in what they mean. And, you know, we would probably put them together, uh, lump them together. But, um, you know, that will, remains to be seen until we get through every group. So tonight's portion of it was um, for the board to be able to ask any questions and then to start adding. Um, you know, pieces that you guys feel are important attributes that a high school graduate from South Hold should be. Can we go back up so we yeah. can see what's there still? Yeah. Okay. I have two that I would add right away. Uh -huh. uh, and I don't know where it will go. Maybe values, or I'm not quite sure. Resilience. I think okay. that resilience is something that we are, in many cases, not doing very well in teaching young people. And, you know, some of our mental health statistics, some of our depression statistics and suicide statistics in this country, and I'm not talking about Southfield, yeah. I think are, are indica indicative of that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think resilience is something that, you know, it's okay, you know, um, because we have seemed to have been creating these generations that think that they have to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And when things don't go, when you lose that one thing that is so important to you, you know, you got to know how to move on from that. So I think that's something huge. Because um, we celebrate all the successes, and we have a lot of successes in Southville, but you know what? It's not always that way. So, and the other one is forgiveness. And I think they go hand in hand because I think what's happening is that, I, again, I also think that we, there are a lot of ways where we're easy on young children or, or easy on children and students, but then there's other ways where when they, make a mistake it's like everybody and their mother is all over them so and i think forgiveness in general we all make mistakes and instead of wanting to pounce and blame and make people be so accountable that they're you know it ruins their life or whatever we just want a little bit of forgiveness and understanding and and guidance on how to not make mistakes again yeah. but not to throw it off. those are just two things i see that i well that that's what the the kids in the middle and the high school and certainly everybody older than that is getting hammered with with all this cancel culture nonsense because if there's no chance at forgiveness or redemption or whatever you want to call it, there's no reason to behave. I mean, this is more of the, the, an end of this argument, but if, if you don't have an opportunity to redeem yourself to be forgiven, well, so I'm just going to act the fool all the time because I'm going to get canceled anyway. And I think if we can start it here that it's important that you seek redemption and that you give redemption so we can all, because it's just, it's just getting bad, 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 yeah. as we all know. But in our particular line of work, um, my particular line of work, and I think you, see, you see people that they're just, they, they're saying, like this, I, I, I'm never going to get out from under this, so why should I even bother? And they go down the path that really shouldn't. Yep. And they, they, it's because they haven't been, because we're so vicious with this cancel nonsense that there is no redemption anymore. Right. And if we can teach kids to seek it, because by the time the young, the young, young ones are old enough to understand it, it might even be where you, you, can't, you don't even know it's an option. It's, it's, you know, you say the wrong words, 
and you know in, right now and and it's all of a sudden there's no yeah. coming I, back I from that and, and you know what i mean and i and i yeah. just you know we all do it what yeah. you know we're all guilty of it you say the wrong words and you don't mean yep. to be whatever and you know used to be you would be you could apologize be forgiven because it didn't nobody judged your entire character on it so it's like you said there's there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no need to walk forward. Yeah, you right. Know. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, we. I oversaw discipline in a very large district, and that uh, was, you know, that restorative peace. Look, you make mistakes. There's right. consequences. But there's I, a restorative peace. Well, I there, think it's also between. We have to start teaching, helping, so how do we, see it between um, each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what you're talking about. It's like, it's both yeah to learn how to forgive themselves to be resilient <laughs> forgive themselves and then also That's to forgive their peers Pardon or me? other people the minute you, you you say something and it might not it you know, might not come out the way you mean yeah it, you get pounced yeah yeah you know? yeah. get it squashed and that's and then they, they try to right er yeah. eradicate Right. And it's not only adults to students is my point. I think it's no, it's, it's something we need very, we need to yeah. teach students to be aware of yeah. because it can be peer to peer, it can be adult to adult, it can be all of these things. And that goes back to the critical independent thinkers for teach, teaching them to understand that when they judge, you know, not judge, but when they look at people and those kinds of situations, they need to remember to look at the big picture of who that person is, what they've done, and all of those things, as opposed to just this yeah. knee-jerk reaction. They should be fired. They should this. They should never work in this business again. You know, that kind of stuff. Yes. I don't know. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. It's hard, it's hard to uh, quantify in a yeah, word. Yeah, so for me, yes, resilience is always there. And then yes. there's forgiveness. I wrote forgiveness also. I, for, I wrote forgiving as forgiving a character Forgiving and trait. resilience and resilience. I put resilience in one of the values. That's a whole different um, I, I agree with Scott because yeah. I like the civic-minded one that was on yeah. one of the slides. I put civic-minded down. And at the risk of being canceled, add to that citizenship. Absolutely. And not the noun the verb. Right. You have well-rounded citizen, but you also mean like more, like understanding citizen. citizenship. Yeah, and what's you know. What is that? What does it entail to be a citizen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if this is the um, forum for it or the place for something like this. I've always felt that just sometimes some basic everyday life skills, kids walk out of school and should have and don't have oh was it somewhere right but it wasn't on ours we have a joke no. we, we kind of tossed them around one time remember we, we were throwing people yeah throw, managing money yeah, you know so balancing yeah. a check but just basic i'm sure other ones had it but it's not on our list so we should add it yeah you know basic you know, just life, life skills. skills yeah just certain things like looking somebody in the eye when you shake their hands even you know i yeah. I, I think there were just you could narrow down to whatever you know uh -huh. who would choose just well, life yeah. skills just mm -hmm important and we can we can expand on the you know what the piece like basic life skills could be the category and it could right. be you and know um, the ability you know to to manage money i mean right like Live without, within your means yeah, without a cash register you got a lot of kids in stores that couldn't give you change you have no idea 20, you know like it's um there was a day yeah. we would hire them from the farm yes. stands because the farm stands never had registers and those kids yeah. could always they always right. knew how to make yeah. change now the farm stands well, they, they don't know what they're supposed to get <laughs> back know. either no you have no idea right. but it's also it also needs if we could go a little yeah. further with that you know you know that's change and all that stuff but understanding the concept of living within your means yeah. you know um, and what that means you so know. Um, I mean to me basic finances like um, I think finances might be a whole different category than basic basic life skills and there's a number of them in there this one says financially savvy yeah there's a number so of goals them about, by budget manager's yeah, money yeah, yeah. there it's a common one that comes up yeah. like I looked at probably 50 of these I picked a handful that were diverse and that I wanted to share with you guys to give you ideas but um you know finance or um financial independence I think yeah. was the way that I liked it mo most um termed on one of them but it showed up in a lot of different ones in different um, ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll add. <coughs> and then, I like this one. The, a lot of the ones on this one. And something else that that Paulette has always said for years, and I agree with it, is that you know, not everybody's going to be you know the superstar or this or whatever. 
that it's okay to be average at things as long as you work hard. You know, and I don't know how you get that in there, but that, you know, again, because we, we go back, we celebrate all kinds of things, but that we should be celebrating those who work hard, regardless of what their grades or their this or the whatever, people who do their best and, and all of that, and, you know. So, um, you've always said that, that you know, have, the, the yeah, average student should be I was, applauded I've always as tried well. to advocate for the average. Right. I feel like people look down on average, and I'm and average. We're all average, or so many of proud us are to be, average. Proud to be average. Right. You know, we may have one little thing that we... It doesn't mean you don't want them to set their goals and, and strive no. to, to do better and to be better, but... But to um, accept where you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. and what you have to offer. And I don't think as a district we do that well. Right. So what would we call that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> celebrate... Um, uh, let's see if it's here. Individual so. worth. I mean, it's it's kind of in there, but I think as a district, we yeah. could do a better job at. You know, we spent all this time focusing on weighted grades, so we can figure out who our first, second, third, and fourth are for colleges and all that stuff. But, you know, there's so many other things. There's so many of those kids now that are in the middle of that, that you know don't need all the extra help and they're not the superstars yeah. and you know and but they're working hard and doing their job so i made a note on the side celebrate um and we'll figure out where it fits right. uh, as this you know as this develops um, and and again thoroughly. teach them how to celebrate that and yeah. bring that out and, and well i think and yeah, respect yeah. that in other people and i think one of the things like this is what we want our kids to walk out with the development of these traits well right. the development of these traits starts in their home when they you know but then it flows through school you know right. like if you want kids to be well-rounded what's well, the thing is we should send this home with every kindergarten packet yeah <laughs> or you know. when they sign up when they first enroll yeah. here when they register and this it should be what we want in 12 years website. this most of this is on you yeah we will you just know. reinforce what you do and you know yeah but I mean, if you want kids to be good communicators, then you need to give them good opportunities to communicate in multiple ways in school, from right. kindergarten yeah. straight to 12th grade. So the nice, like when I say um, the backward design model that we will use, you know, this will affect what we do in different areas right. of our school straight through. Right. In the area of communication, mm -hmm. we, and I used to do training seminars on this, we don't teach active listening. We teach listening, and basically our, all of our education in listening was, now sit down, take your, take your papers and pens out, and listen to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? As opposed to really teaching how to actively listen to what's going on. And it's a whole different thing, and I think we need to teach active listening, and we need to teach spoken communication. Um, we spend a lot of time in writing, yeah. but, I, but effective spoken two-way communication. Spend a lot of time in typing. Well, regarding yeah, writing, had a lot of time writing. Yeah. I, uh, well, you know what I mean, typing. I, uh, but effective verbal two-way communication. You know that 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 whole feedback loop that you have with communicating. And I think we need to focus more on writing and grammar, particularly since we have growing numbers of students who English is not their native language. And mm -hmm. you know the way younger people communicate now. You know it's easy. You know texting and all. So I, I truly believe that over the years, a lot of those skills have diminished substantially. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, I, when I see younger people, sometimes uh, in my, you know, a lot of what I do, you, you, we communicate via the written word. And the written word is very important because that, uh, that's all you have, really, if there yeah. are problems and issues. And, and sometimes it's, it's hard for me, I'll read things in it, I just even even in, at the physician level, I see poor writing, poor grammar, mm -hmm. uh, run on paragraph. You know the basic yeah. things that I still remember from ninth grade. So I, I really truly believe that I, I think we really John's need been to focus. About that for many years. Folk, you know, just real basic stuff. Yeah. And I think it's you know one year I asked for writing samples yeah. at different levels because I know how hard it is for these teachers. They've got kids with interrupted educations, kids who don't speak English, mm -hmm. and it, it's very hard for them. And you know, you, you want to pull up the lowest, but you also, you don't want to, you know, the middle you want yeah. to, you want to pull everybody up. Right, yeah, right. And I just think, you know, sometimes the first communication you have with people is is, a, is an email or a letter. Well, no one writes letters, but. A lot of times yeah. that's the only communication. That's, and and, yeah, and so right there, you could have someone who is, uh, 
a communicator, a wonderful person. But if that first interaction is sort of a sort of a sloppy, yeah, right. messy email, uh, that's. Um, you know, that's, that's basic uh, business writing. We get a resume. Basic. I start reading basic, it the first basic, time. Basic business basic. writing is what you're doing. This is a paragraph. Oh, this is like a topic sentence. You know, this is this is how you use punctuation, commas, semi, you know, basic, and basic stuff. And, and, you know, so kids can express themselves. And I think they'll build more confidence. And so I really, really believe strongly in... Okay, in nice. So I put that under communication. And it needs to be yeah, communication, but, but I, I really want specifics. Rick, Rick, I, I, I wrote so I down... I think it was uh, Ellen O'Neill came in. I think it was Ellen. I don't know if it was the junior high or the senior high people, but there was a little graph. And it says, this is what we really want kids to... This is what they really need to know. And at these levels. Just That's just and it has done. to be collaborative. Be. You know, the, the seventh grade teacher has to go back to the fifth grade teacher and say, this, these are the issues, you know, to walk, not, not in, a, in a nastier no. way, but here are, here are the things that these kids are really good at. How do at. we make it better? And here are the things that I'm, I'm seeing problems with, and we got to all work together and talk to each other mm -hmm. as to, you know, what we can do as a team. You know, to get these kids to the best place they can be, and yeah. with certain skills, by the time you know. And of course, it's like anything: the more you do it, the better you get at it. So absolutely, if it's not required to be done, you know, extensively, yeah. then you, we all get better at things because we do them, not because you know, we first watch got others on the board, do them. One of my partners, and I have three partners who, who live in Southhold, and and their children all went here, uh, K through 12. And he's, he was very happy with the education that his children had here, but his, his main criticism was, and not everybody's going to go to college, but he said his daughter really struggled to write at a college level. And he had to help her a lot. Uh -huh. And now that, uh, not everybody needs to write at a college level, mm -hmm. but, you know, I remember, and, and, you know, it wasn't, he, he, he was very happy with everything that went on here, but he thought that was an issue. And this was you know, a quite, you know, 15 years ago. I agreed. And I think it's the organization of, that's is. the biggest it thing. Is. It's the organization of yeah. a document so people understand. Most, so many of the things you, you read are these thought, they're like the way a student is thinking, but they don't understand that the reader is not in their head. It's more prevalent now because that's how they can Right, yeah, but they don't. Text. They don't get Bullets, that, that dots, abbreviations. Right, but they also don't get that the that the, the perspective of the reader is not. They're not in your head, yeah. so you have to be clear and precise about very certain things. But you also don't need to run on and on and on about other things. So it's very. So, I, 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 um, when you students are going to be involved in this, obviously, uh -huh. I always question now what students and how will they be selected. And I would certainly mm -hmm. hope that it would be a real cross-section well, yeah. of, of, of our district mm -hmm. and not just the best and the brightest. Because no, no. We're, we're looking at, um, we talked about it today at a meeting, and we're looking at um, trying to figure out how to do a K-12, um, you know, possibly something in every classroom over a period of a week where the teacher decides when they want to present this to the kids and ask them, you know, like truthfully, in a kindergarten, you may have to explain some of these things. Of course. You know, um, so, you know, you might need a couple conversations to get yeah. through it all. And, and um, you know, you might get some great, you never know where great ideas are gonna come from in a school, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, but that student perspective universally is something that we're looking for we're not looking to put together a committee um, even when we send it out uh, to community and parents we're probably going to send it out to all of them and then look for feedback that people want to share Good. you know um, yeah. it's not a uh, we That's have good. we have so many different makes and models here um, and we're here to educate all of them and give all of them an opportunity uh, to have you know, success after they leave here. So the character traits are really gonna vary. And it may not be that every single one of them does apply to every student, but that would be more the bullets under it. So for instance, um, you know, the collaborator, being a collaborator is something we want all of our kids to have, but underneath it, the, the different types of collaboration will vary because if you're playing on a sports team in college, it's gonna be very different you know, then if you're you're uh, coding on a computer, both very, um, you know, very good things to do after school and things we aspire our kids to do. But if they're not, you know, the overall picture will look similar, 
Um, right. You know, empathy and sympathy. In some cases, you can have both. In some cases, you can only have one. If you've never experienced some of the things that I've experienced, you can never be truly empathetic, but you can be sympathetic. And so, um, you know, the picture should encompass everybody. Um, and like the, you know, self-directed is an overarching topic. What does that mean? There'll be some, there'll be descriptive bullets that will be more germane to different um, types of people and kids and, um, you know, underneath it. So that would be uh, that would be the way we're looking to do it as we go forward. I, I have a question mm -hmm. and a comment. I, I would be interested in, we've talked about this for years too, and this might be, I don't know how you reach them, but I think former graduates are really our best source for mm -hmm information on what they left here with and, and without yeah. yeah and not, um, and not and the ones that wait are let me just finish years old. no just yeah. no i mean the ones that are in college now and the yeah. ones that or didn't make it through college i still yeah. we've asked for what's the retention of our kids when they go to college and how many of them retain for four years we've never gotten that because we don't know how to gather it's that information gather. i yeah. know but if we could find a way boy mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love we had a, a young man actually come and speak at from the audience a couple of years ago was Elliot Shine yeah. and kind of thanked our district for doing yeah. what we did for him. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I don't want to hear the positives necessarily. I want to hear what we it. could have done better, Learn all from, of it. You know what? Yeah, and, and then I, let me just finish. So that was my thought on from, former graduates. And I yeah. also have a question as to when this gets put together, uh -huh. how are these things measured? What's the tool or how? How do you measure to make sure that the students yeah. that so, we want to be um, the portrait of our graduate, yeah. how, how are we going to measure those? So, um, and when do you measure yeah. them? So these... Um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I had to no, say no, those no, two no, things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, you but it's a good question. Thoughts, I'm sorry. Um, I jotted down graduates because um, to whatever level we possibly could, uh, especially recent graduates were a great, great source of information. Um, you know, like we used... To, we used to do exit surveys with our teams when they mm -hmm. were leaving and, and uh, exit surveys with our sixth graders and fifth graders when they were leaving. And you'd be surprised. The kid who didn't say anything for six years tells great. you some really interesting stuff on the way out the door, um, which can it can sting at times, but it is beneficial to becoming yeah. better. Absolutely. You know, so I've jotted that down. When it comes to measurement of these, um, you know, these are not designed to be, these are designed for us to then design our goals for. The goals would be measurable. Oh, um, okay. You know, now our goals would feed all of these. That's that backward design model, you know. Um, you know, and that's where, that's where like um, our measurement pieces would come in place. It's difficult to measure a portrait because I could exhibit 50% of these and that could be perfect for me leaving here and put me in a very successful place, but I look like I got 50%, which to all of us is not really a passing grade. Um, whereas, you know, the goals will be more finite and, you know, we'll look at, and I know we talked about, I know I shared some of this with you over the summer, we talked about it a little bit, like, um, you know, I, I like the SMART goal model, which are, you know, very specific, measurable goals with timelines and accountability attached to them. So, you know, certain goals will be ours um, because there will be budget making goals or whatever it may be for our district. Other goals will be, you know, different administrators and other goals will be uh, germane to different teachers and even students. And that's where the measurable piece will come more into place. Um, so that's that's. Yeah, that is the vision for which way we would move with this. Uh, do, do we have, and uh, you may not know this, it'd be interesting to know, because all of our students get their cell phone email. I wonder if they close them out of that when they're done. I think they do. They do. But it, question, but it would be, you know, we've been talking, like you said, about this for some time, about being able to reach out to our graduates. You know, maybe we should start at the end of the year asking them for, you know, an email and whether or not we can continue to contact. Do you know what I mean? I, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think said. we should put that in place. We we have the technology now that we didn't have 15 years ago when we started talking about all this. I think we try to start it. I, I, I think that we've all heard um, from former graduates that the consistent thing is they, they didn't have study skills when they got yes. to college. I don't know about you guys, but I've yep. certainly heard it from kids and you now have kids in college yep. of your own that um that that seemed to be the one yeah repetitive thing that we heard they didn't know how to independently study um so I, those are the, the, the things the, um, the other thing back in the beginning you said that who would be 
participating in this. He said parents, mm -hmm. students, and all teachers. I would consider all, all staff, employees. right? Every all employee. employees. That's no, right. Yeah, okay. what I said was all employees. All employees. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, well, like I, I want met to make with sure. uh, Anthony, and I met okay. with Ryan and Chuck, and okay, uh, good. everybody today. And we right. talked about how we get this out to everybody good. because um, our kids are going to go into all these different fields. So for me to tell you what's an important uh, character trait to be a firefighter would not be as, as relevant as you doing it. You know what I mean? So getting information from all of us. Now, some of them would be the same because the truth is a successful person in any position may exhibit similar character traits, right. um, but some might be individualized. So we're talking about all of our employees, all of our students, right. and then putting it out to all of our families right. um, to try to put together a really, really complete uh, profile of what a South Hold student, because the truth is, you know, what our community, you know, parents and people from this community, you know, like what their, um, what their um, take on what a student should walk out, of, what walk out of the school with matters. You know, I mean, we are uh, the school for this community. They're the sure. ones that support it, and uh, overwhelmingly, you know, they're overwhelmingly positive and supportive of us. And so they might have different, you know, like you have a different perspective because the fact that you work with kids, you know, in a work setting. We have other people that do that too that are parents here, and, and uh, so. You know, we want to try to gather that input from all of them. We may even put it out on a public, in a public venue for anybody in our community mm -hmm. to add. Um, right. You know, so um, it's it's a long process. Like it's a four or five month process. Uh, I will share with you the iterations as we go through. Um, you know, I'll make sure I put that in the packet every time right. we update something and um, you know start adding in different pieces. But I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting work to do, you know, and it's work that we kind of started last year. A lot of it was exploratory for me last year to find out really what we did have, what we didn't have. What we, you know, uh, meeting with everybody in the district and, and having conversations and uh, you know help to kind of guide where we're going with this. And to me, it's clear that we need like a. You know, this is a guiding set of principles that, that um, we want to work towards, right. you know, for all of our uh, kids, you know, so that they can be successful. Yeah. Anybody have any other comments or you questions? You have study skills to there, right? <laughs> uh, um, Paula just brought that up, and she's right. We have all heard that yeah. over and over. So study skills and different kinds of study school skills for whether it be college, trade school, or whatever, I mean... So would that be under basic life skills, or would it be its own category? Uh, I'm just going to put it in its own for now. Yeah. And then. Um, but it's it's it, it comes from yeah. I think we do, and this might go back to too much. Sometimes you know we're a small school and parents are very involved and students are, that sometimes I think our kids get fed little snippets of information or pieces of of material, if you will, and then they get tested on it and they they do good and they do good and they do good. But then, you know, you go away to college or to, you know, you're taking, even if it's you're in a trade school or this, you know, and it's all of a sudden, here's the material you need to know and learn over the next six weeks. And you need to be able to keep it all and accumulate it and, and figure out how to keep that all in there to be able to be successful on, on some sort of an examination. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the way education's been for a while has lent itself to that, at least not here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I put it in how, its own for now. How about not only the ability to survive, but to thrive an extended outage of the Internet? <laughs> yeah, true that. We should, we, should, we should make the kids leave their phones home for a week. Look at the trauma when Facebook shut down. What's that? Look at the trauma that happened when Facebook shut down. For a do you know, the, know. Bank, the bank I go to, I think once a month, I don't know if they still do it, but for a day, they, they do make them do manual. manual. It's very ha hard yeah. for us, even in, in my business, when the yeah. computers, and um, they have, they've gone down, and yeah. Yeah. and we actually had to have them down for an update Monday morning. We thought it would be a good day because it was a holiday. For two and a half hours, we didn't couldn't use anything, and yeah. it's, you know. It, 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 huge it, amounts of trouble. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That happens. We've become well, so. What happened recently yeah. is on it. Really they all started so going. All, all the staff started going down to another office, down the street, yeah. and using their computers. But that was just because that office still isn't filled yet. Yeah. A couple of us 
you know, reverted to what we used to do, and that was dictating over the phone yeah. um, right. and having someone type it up. Um, but we experience yeah, the same yeah. problems, and it's a disaster. Well, I'm you just, so, I'm to just talking to social actually, media. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I agree with that stuff. <laughs> I agree with what Scott said. Like but the point is, is that bird, you can, John. You know what I mean? You know, you know how. <laughs> That's the so the younger places doctors where this, were when they terrified. Come into the school, the younger they doctors were terrified, they and they, they all yeah. ran they down, the, down the the so the the to um, the other <coughs> office. We had them, you know, they didn't want to. We had like um, they looked like the kindergarten cubbies, you know, that where you put mm -hmm. the papers for the kids yeah, to take yeah. at the mm -hmm. end of the day for their folder. We had those in a number of our high school teacher had the teachers had those and when you came in like family in consumer science yeah, yeah uh, we had them in Sachem uh, we had them in Colmac too I've had them we had them in Colmac Middle School a lot of places I've worked have had them right I think it's teacher choice though right it's, it was teacher and there's choice some teachers that, yeah. that have issues with it and others that are using it, them. yeah a lot of it typically was um, depending on the course you took because I have to tell you like I watched social studies classes and I have watched them in multiple districts where. They would say they didn't have one to one initiatives. They would say to the kids, take out your phone, go to this, and they would have them answer through the phone and they could see, you know, on their front board, you could see the answers going up and down. And and then like in family consumer science class, they all had to put their phone in the cubby because the truth is you didn't need it in what they were doing there and they didn't want it as a distraction. And it was never a hardship for kids. They never had a hard time with it. I can tell you when they go out, mm -hmm. you know, when they stop working, when we've had some of the weather events and different parts of towns and like it it shuts people down. I, I would say to me, um, in the communicator, you know, being a good communicator feeds into the social media piece. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a social media piece in that, Absolutely. If, if you ask me. Yeah, but we, I'm, I'm just getting it, like, part of the resilience. I want them to be uncomfortable when that doesn't work. <laughs> you know, and realize I'm not going to die, yeah. I'm going to survive, and I'm actually going to be able to walk talk breathe um, you know eat the world isn't ending yes yeah well, you never know it, 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 they are able to do they it because know, I, they don't have it. They so they can live they like we so did better better off, like, to tell them better off. They yeah to right. but you know the problem what also though with scott is that that it's not just it's not just students anymore i mean oh i know how many restaurants you go to and, and exercise adults or I mean, I went I out today, I totally forgot everybody. my phone, it was so freeing. I was like, I don't even need to worry about it because it wasn't with me. <laughs> so so um, you guys have these packets. If there's other things you think of, please pass them on. Um, like I said, this is going to be, you know, it's going to be an extensive process because we're going to be including so many different constituent groups, um, you know, that it'll take time to do. I'll continue to give you information as we go through. Um, you know, I'm going to talk to Ellen and Terrence and uh, ask them to speak with their art departments about, um, you know, possibility of, of creating a way where we can get a number of different uh, graphics that could go along with it. Um, you know, that um, I would love to have a kid created, student created graphic that goes along with it rather than something I, you know, I make or copy or. That would be cool. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for ownership for that. And, uh, you know, and I would see this to be something that, you know, maybe it would go home with every kindergarten student, or maybe it would be a conversation annually with all students. Um, you know, and that would give opportunities to upgrade different, you know, as, as the world changes, like, you know, when we talk about communication, social media is something that needs to be on there because I watch so many people that don't know how to communicate and they use social media to communicate and they don't know how to do it and they put, you know, you want to talk about three strikes and you're out, one strike on social media and you're out. And, oh, yeah. and um, you know, we start teaching that in elementary school and for whatever the reason may be, there's an 11th grader every year that in 10 years hasn't learned it, and uh, which means we didn't teach it, you know, well enough. So that didn't exist 10 years ago or 15 years ago. If I'm putting this portrait together, it's oh, not, absolutely. you know, like so... That's kind cool. of an ever-changing, you, you know, as our world changes. Well, you right. could probably put citizenship, I mean, uh, social media, or in, in every box. one of those boxes. Yeah, yeah, you probably yeah. You know, you got to be a good digital citizen. you got to be... Right, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's a conversation. It's a good conversation. Yeah. Uh, so, 
But there's no reason to rush this. I mean, no, no. Well, I think it's an important, like, if it's going to guide our goals and if it's going to guide, you know, the things that we measure and, and our mission statements. And, you know, mission statements to me, they're very nice and they look great and they, they're fun to make and all. But if they're not tied to something tangible, then they're just really fancy words. And that's quite honestly what most places have. I think we did do a mission statement, and I think it touches a on a lot of this, because yeah, yeah. we worked on it a yeah. few years ago. But I truly believe this is kind of the next step to that. Yeah. You know, that's the overall, like you said, the thing that uh -huh. sounds like, okay, this yeah. was important, because we, we all had input into what that was. You know, and now this is now really getting down to the nitty gritty of, okay, how are we gonna do it? What are all these characteristics broken down? So, yeah. Can I just uh, share something with you? Uh, I saw a former board member who was on our fields and said that kudos to everybody in the district because the campus looks phenomenal. And said to want to pass that to the board, the administrators, and to the people, yeah. I mean, and the people, the, best. We got the people who phenomenal. are doing the job, like absolutely the most phenomenal beautiful, staff. beautiful yeah. campus they treat this that you place could see. Like it's their own property. Yeah. So I mean, it was uh, the person stopped me to make sure they told me that. That's so. And then I told you guys, um, I ordered a bond placard for outside. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Oh, the bond placard. The bond placards you said a that you bond. put up. <laughs> We have one in the outside lobby yeah. here for when the building and is built. And there's one uh, by the um, auditorium. Yeah, whenever you do an addition or you do bond work, you typically put a placard up explaining what it was. And you know, I sent you guys the language in a packet, and you know, thanking our community for it and the names of the superintendent and, and everybody that was on there. Unfortunately, just like pretty much everything else, including toilet Supply paper and chain. paper towels, it's back ordered. It's back ordered yeah. So on I wanted off. it. Uh, it's on a boat off the coast yeah. of California. Yeah. I wanted it hung up for a homecoming. Um, about a week after homecoming, the person replied and said, "It's going to be in, it's going to be six weeks or something like That's that." Okay. And so, uh, yeah. So just so that you know, we did well, order. Will it also include the the updates in here too, such as the library? That particular one won't. And but the we'll tech look, rooms you know, and the because um, um, I know we're all super yeah. proud of that. This was part of that same mm -hmm. very same bond. Yeah. So we'll. Um, Six more plaques. We would do different <laughs> ones. Like we could do one indoor plaque, which could right. be. Right. Yeah, okay, just, just one. Oh yeah, just one. Just one for this yeah. area. But I think this a, is really. I think the it was area. a big job outside, and we it had was. talked about it before. And putting something out there, would, you know, we will be nice. You it know, was great. So. certainly the people inside benefit as much. Okay. okay. What do you say?